Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem. Permutations. I've actually already solved this problem before, but I think I could explain it a bit better. So I wanted to do it again. We're given an array of distinct integers and we want to return all possible permutations of those integers. So for the record, a permutation of a set of numbers like this would look something like this. We have three numbers, so we're going to have three positions to fill. For the first position, we have three choices. We can pick any of these three elements. So let's put a three over here. For the second position, we don't know which element we already picked. We could have picked this one or this one or this one for the first spot. But either way, we know we're going to have only two elements remaining to choose from to place over here. So there's going to be two different elements that go here. And then after we've picked the first two elements, this one is already decided. So we'll put a one here. So three times two times one, we'll have six different permutations of this set of numbers. And in order to visualize it, let's kind of draw a decision tree. So let's say that for the first choice, we can choose among three elements. We can have one, two, or three. So regardless of which path we take, we're gonna have two choices. Here we can have either a two or a three. We can't have a one because we already picked it. Here we can have a one or a three because we can't have two, we already picked it. Here we can have a one or a two, but not a three. So now it's gonna get a bit more simple. We'll only have one choice for each of these and it must be the element we haven't chosen. So here it's gonna be three, here it's gonna be two, here it's gonna be three, here it's gonna be one, here we haven't chosen two, and here we haven't chosen one. So now if you go through each path, we have a permutation. We have exactly six of them and you can see every single one of these is different. So if we could have each of these in an array, this is the result, like we've calculated the entire result. Now, the only problem with the way we're thinking about it here is it's pretty easy on like pen and paper to draw this out, but how would we actually calculate this in terms of code? Obviously, it looks like we're using recursion and it's definitely possible to do it that way, but the way we're doing it right now involves a decent amount of bookkeeping. Because what exactly is the sub problem? Like here, we chose one, right? So we got rid of one and these are the elements remaining. So now we're trying to create permutations with those elements. But here, the sub problem is different. Here we use two. So now we have these elements remaining and we're trying to create uh, permutations with those elements. Again, we could do it this way, but it would involve like removing this element and doing some other stuff. So I think a slightly easier way to think about this problem is to really use the idea of sub problems because it makes recursion very, very easy. So let me kind of redo this in a very simple way. Now we're still going to use recursion, but we're actually not even going to branch anywhere. So you're going to see something interesting here. We have three numbers to choose from. So what we're trying to do is give me all permutations from one, two and three. But next, the sub problem we're going to ask is this. Give me all permutations with just these two numbers. So we're going to have something like this, two, three. And then finally, we're going to ask, just give me all permutations with just a single number. Notice how it's getting more simple as we go down. So watch what the return value is going to be. Well, first, let's go to the base case. If I don't have any elements from here, I'm going to return up an array with an empty list. Like that's our permutation. We can only create one permutation with an empty set of numbers and it's an empty permutation. So that's the base case just to keep it simple. And now it's gonna stay pretty simple. With just three, how many permutations could we have? Well, it would look like this. We're gonna return up to the parent just a single array with the value three because a single number can only be permutated like that. Now it's gonna get more interesting. From here now, from this subproblem two and three, how do we solve it? Well, you probably know what the return value is going to look like. It's going to look pretty simple, just like this. So it's going to have two in the front and it's going to have two in the back. So three, two like this. So these are the two permutations we can create. Now, the reason I'm showing you this way is this way is so easy to calculate. Just watch this from the base case. All we do is just add three to that list. Okay. Now from here, this was the numbers we're given. We already got all permutations from three. So now the only thing to do is to add two. So what we do now with this array, it's a very simple array. It just has one element. So we know we have two choices actually. With two, we can put it at the front or we can put it 
at the back. So that's exactly what we do. We create a permutation with two at the front, and then we create a permutation with two at the back. And then from here, we're going to do the same thing. We have these two permutations, two and three. What we're going to do is try to put one in every position. We're going to try to put one at the beginning. We're going to try to put one in the middle, and we're going to try to put one at the end. So we're going to end up with three different permutations. We're going to do the same thing with this one. We also have three, two. It's obviously different from two, three. So we're going to put one at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end. And if we do this, we're going to end up with three more permutations, which is six total permutations. And that's obviously going to be the result. And if you're curious, I'll quickly draw out those permutations here. One goes at the end here. One goes in the middle. Uh, when I said end, I meant beginning. Sorry. Here one goes at the end. And from this permutation, three, two, we're going to put one at the beginning. So one, three, two. We're going to put one in the middle, three, one, two, and we're going to put one at the end, three, two, one. These are the six permutations. Now let's code it up and I'll also explain the time complexity in the coding solution. So we're going to start with the base case, which is pretty simple in our case. We're going to have the length of the input and when it's equal to zero, we're going to return a list with a single empty list inside of it. And so the reason we're using that is because we're only going to have a single parameter, the input list. The idea is that we're going to keep calling the recursive function with the input nums without the first element. So that's the sub problem. Just get rid of the first element from nums. Just create a sub array starting at index one, and that'll give us all the values from nums except the first one. So these are our permutations, like our sub problem. And then we want to, from these, add the current element, which is the number at index zero, to all of these in every possible position. And we're going to store those in another variable, which I'm going to call result. That's what we're going to end up returning from this function. Now to actually do what I said earlier, let's just go through every single permutation that we have. And for each permutation, let's go through every possible index that we could insert the current value into that permutation. So I'm going to get the length of P. I'm also going to have plus one because we technically could add to the end of the permutation as well. So now for that permutation P, I'm actually going to create a copy of it because we're going to use this one multiple times. We're going to possibly add a value to it in multiple different places. We don't want to modify the original permutation. We just want to create a copy of it. So I'm going to store that in a variable called p copy then for p copy we want to insert at index i the value nums at index zero we're taking this value inserting it at this index we're going to do that for every index and then we're going to take p copy and append it to the result we're going to do that for every permutation and then the result is going to be here. And then we're just going to go ahead and return. Now, as you can see on the left, this solution works and it is very efficient. Well, it's about as efficient as we can get for this problem. And let me just kind of show you how to analyze the time complexity. The idea here is it's going to be easier for us to do it without kind of focusing too much on the code. Remember that how many permutations are we going to have? Well, if we have three elements, we had something like three times two times one. That is a math equation called n factorial. So if we have n elements in the input, we're going to have this many different permutations. How do we build each individual permutation? Well, to add a single element to a permutation, we're like inserting in the middle. That's how we're coding this up. So it's an N operation. And that's just inserting one element into a existing permutation. If we're inserting N elements into each permutation, we're going to have like an N squared over here. So the overall time complexity is going to be N factorial times N squared. But this is really the dominating factor in the time complexity, N factorial. Space complexity wise, if you're not counting the output, which is just going to be n times n factorial because each permutation is going to be of length n and we're going to have this many of them. If you're not counting the output and you're just counting like extra space here, the space is still actually going to be n factorial times n because we have multiple copies of it here. So this is space. This is time. Now, you might think since we don't even branch in this recursion, isn't it possible to solve this problem without recursion? And you're exactly right. 
the logic is going to actually be very, very similar. Like we're going to start kind of with this as the base case. I think the time and space complexity is going to be the exact same. So I guess I'll leave this here. Um, but this, we're going to call this our permutations and we're going to get rid of this because we're not going to have any recursion. I want to leave this code here because I want to show you how similar the solution is going to be. Remember, this is the base case. We want to compute like the sub problem. So for every number, I could use like an index i to make it more clear, but we don't need to. I'm just going to go for n in nums. For every number, we want to now add this number to all the existing permutations. That's what we're trying to do. That's the logic behind this. So I'm going to call the new permutations we create with this number, the new perms. It's going to be just an empty list for now. We're going to go through every existing permutation, kind of like we did down here, right? Going through every permutation. And now I want to insert this element into every permutation and I need to do that for every position. So I'm going to say for I in range length of P plus one, exactly the same as we did down here. And now to that permutation, I want to create a copy of it just like we did before. And then I want to insert into that copy the current element at index I, we want to add N. So this is slightly different. I guess it's not nums of zero, it's N. And also, I want to say, let's take this now and add it to new perms. So new permutations, append, p, copy. The only difference here is going to be at the end, we want to update perms to be this now. So we're going to set permutations equal to the new permutations. And then at the end, we're going to return the permutations. So you can see that the code above is very similar to the code below. And I kind of got rid of the base case here. So this is not like the complete code, but you can see that this portion of the code is pretty much exactly like this portion. So I'm going to get rid of this down here and I'm going to run this code for you now and show you here that it also works and it's also just as efficient pretty much in terms of big O at least. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.